Tracking the ups and downs of property prices in this country is a national sport. Our TV bulletins are increasingly filled with images of renters struggling to find even a dodgy one-room bedsit to call home. Once a month, the country holds its breath to see if the Reserve Bank will whack everyone with another interest rate rise. But what if the housing market was even more of a problem? What if the entire economy was being eaten by a property monster? The situation is deteriorating so quickly that Brendan Coates from the Grattan Institute reckons we could return to a world that looks like Bridgerton, Pride and Prejudice and Wuthering Heights. He says there's a real risk of a Jane Austen world where your financial future is tied to your parents' property holdings. Housing is more than price. It's affecting productivity. Imagine if you found a huge gold reef and you needed people to be able to dig up that gold. If housing is so expensive that your workers can't get to the mine, you're not going to produce anything. Productivity growth has been slowing around the globe for the past 25 years, just as the cost of housing has gone through the roof. There's evidence our love affair with splashbacks and expensive bath fittings is taking the zing out of our relationships. Demographers have noted that the age at which people start pairing up has been growing for years. Some believe that it's no coincidence that if you can't afford to move out of mum and dad's place into your own, then the chances of a child coming along is diminished. It's not just the first child, the cost of a bigger house for a second or third child mean there's likely to be fewer brothers and sisters for the eldest child to tease. 15 minutes from the federal parliament, the new suburb of Whitlam is being built. When Gough Whitlam was thrown from office in 1975, the median house price in Canberra was $33,500. In that new suburb of Whitlam, the median price is $1.2 million, an increase of 3,500%. Our banking system really is built on bricks and mortar. Less than 20 years ago, the big four banks held mortgages worth $360 billion, or about a quarter of GDP. Today, their mortgage book is nudging $1.6 trillion, or 70% of GDP. Over that time, Australian households have become the fifth most indebted in the world. 